soldier said that when prisoners came into Bagram, they were immediately assaulted. They blasted music at them. Often they had dogs barking at them. And they would use some of the most menacing interrogators to create this sense of threat. It's not just a disorientation procedure, it's actually a, f a terrorizing procedure. It's, it's designed to terrify you into spilling the beans, as it were. Being spat at, being sworn at, uh, having the dogs barking around, cameras flashing in your face, and then to be reshackled completely naked and to, to do what they, can, they call the body search, the, the, the cavity search, and then to be questioned naked, shivering. After they read their rules and everything, they're taken to their cell to where they're going to be put in sleep deprivation for 24 hours. That's standard for everybody. There'll be a board when you walk in the room on this wall. You might see an arrow going up to the ceiling. That, and it would be maybe a one by it. So that'd be an hour up. He's got to stand up for an hour. You know, you're in that room, not saying anything. Oh, well, you know, maybe he knows a little bit more. Let's let him, you know, lose a little bit more sleep which is the idea of keeping you like this so you won't sleep, you'll stand. These are stress positions. The most famous of all Abu Ghraib photographs, of course, of that hooded Iraqi standing on a box, arms outstretched. He's told that if he steps off the box, if he moves, He'll be electrocuted. That's the point of the fake electrical wires. And then with arms extended. As we'd say to viewers, don't try this at home, but do try it. Just stand for 10 minutes with your arms stretched out, not moving. The CIA launched a mind control project, a veritable Manhattan project of the mind in the 1950s. The CIA outsourced all of the dull behavioral research to the most brilliant behavioral scientists at the top universities in the United States and Canada. I began to think while we were doing our experiments that it's possible that uh, something that involves physical discomfort or even pain might be more tolerable than simply the, the deprivation conditions that we studied. Dr. Hebb found that he could induce a state akin to acute psychosis in 48 hours. All he did was he had student volunteers sit in a very pleasant air-conditioned cubicle with goggles, gloves, and earmuffs. They actually know what they look just like? The Guantanamo detainees. If you see that, those outfits that the Guantanamo detainees have where they have the, the gloves and the goggles and the earmuffs, you know, everybody thinks, oh, that's security. No, 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 that's sensory breakdown. Within a day, there would be hallucinations. Within two days, breakdown. There was a, an approved technique for the MPs when somebody was a difficult prisoner that you could hit them on the legs. It was totally considered not a, not a lethal blow. It's just your knee going into the, the side of your thigh about uh, midway up. Uh, it's supposed to be a, a pressure point right there. and it, it controls them really easy. Over two days, everybody's hitting you on the legs. Uh, it can cause some severe problems. Some of the soldiers said they started using the knee strikes essentially to shut him up because he was yelling and screaming. There was like four MPs on this guy, and uh, one of the MPs was, just kept giving him kidney shots. The other two, uh, they slammed him to the ground, and then the fourth one like jumped on his back. He got a big gash on his nose. The damage that was done was done from multiple strikes. They were very frail people and I was surprised that it had taken that long for one of them to die in our custody. If you look at those Abu Ghraib photographs, again, it's always the same techniques. First of all, there's the sexual activity with the woman's garments and the masturbation and all the rest. People were saying Arabs really are very sensitive to sexual humiliation. Well, who the hell isn't sensitive to sexual hum humiliation, you know? Nobody wants to be stripped down naked and forced to masturbate with a hood over your head. It's ridiculous. I mean, humiliation, trying to break people, came from somewhere. The secretary and others have said, well, you know, we've conducted 12 investigations, each and all of which were geared to looking downward, down toward Lindy England and Grenier, and not looking up. There were always officers coming and going through the facility. 
we kind of joked about it as being the greatest show on earth. Everyone wanted to come and look at the terrorists. Mr. Rumsfeld's office called our office frequently. Very high commanders would want to be kept up to date on a daily basis on certain prisoners there. The brass knew. They saw him shackled. They saw him hooded, and they said, right on, y'all are doing a great job. People were being told to rough up Iraqis that wouldn't cooperate. We were also told they're nothing but dogs. Then all of a sudden, you start looking at these people as less than human. Among the interrogation guidelines they gave us, it said that dogs are authorized to be used on detainees. Uh, you know, stress positions, uh, sleep deprivation. All of those things that I did that I would consider harsh techniques or violating the Geneva Conventions, I was told to do. We were, so we were told to do that to these people by our superiors. One of the things we know about torture is that someone who is tortured will tell his interrogator what he thinks the interrogator wants to hear. They threw him on an aircraft and they rendered him through extraordinary rendition to Egypt. They later subjected him to two weeks of brutal torture involving all these techniques, including waterboard. And they got information from al-Libi stating that Saddam Hussein's regime had trained al-Qaeda in chemical and biological warfare. I can trace the story of a senior terrorist operative telling how Iraq provided training in these weapons to al-Qaeda. Fortunately, this operative is now detained, and he has told his story. A year later, the CIA branded al-Libi a fabricator, rescinded all the intelligence reports with that information in it. So in other words, you will get information, but you'll get false information. All the experts say that torturing people is not the best way to get information. Breaking down the barriers between you and them, gaining their confidence is the best way to get it. If, if you say over the course of Afghanistan, Gitmo, and Iraq, we've detained 50,000 people, I'd say less than 1% were terrorists. Were some of them insurgents? Probably. Uh, were almost all of them in Iraq in particular going to become insurgents after their treatment? Uh, yes. <laughs> we don't know what revenge is coming down the road. And if I wanted to incite the faithful, I could just take one picture with a dog collar on and just point it at it and say, you're duty bound now to get revenge. American values are premised upon the notion of human dignity and the sanctity of the individual. To allow for cruelty to be applied as a matter of official policy is to say that our forefathers were wrong about these inalienable rights. I think the probabilities exist that there will be other terrorist attacks, that more Americans will die. And the argument that we have to apply abuse to detainees in order to protect American lives, I find to be violative of our deepest values and to the very safety of our country. And I think a lot of people have just decided, well, you know, it's different now. After 9-11, we, you know, we can't, we can't be good anymore. We have to, you know, get tough. And so we'll, we'll have to see what that does to us. What do you think? I think that's bullshit, frankly. I mean, I, th I think that we still need to try and uh, uh, be as good as we can be, you know. <laughs>